When the Ride Canuga Bike Park made its initial debut in 2020, it quickly became a destination among the offerings already available to the southeastern mountain bike community. In the short time it has been in operation, the venue has made quite an impression on the riding in the region, and the venue has garnered a well-deserved reputation as one of the gnarliest places to ride, as well as a true training ground for those looking to progress in the sport of mountain biking. A lot of time and money has been invested into the property, and it is effectively transformed into an attainable must-visit year-round location for the southeastern mountain bike population, home to some of the biggest jumps and smoothest trails I have ever ridden. In this video, we will take a deep dive into the history, experiences, quirks, and fun that can be experienced at Ride Canuga in Hendersonville, North Carolina. If you enjoy the video as it plays, I ask that you show your support by clicking the like and subscribe buttons as it greatly helps the channel navigate the challenges of the YouTube algorithm. Now let's take a deep dive into the fascination surrounding the Ride Canuga Bike Park. Opening in 2020, the development of the Ride Canuga Bike Park was created as a joint effort between entrepreneur David Lamont, World Cup downhill racer Nico Moali, the Pisgah Trail Company, and the Canuga Conference Center and Youth Summer Camp. Ride Canuga is actually the second bike park style venue to open in the Asheville area, and as of 2022, Ride Rock Creek Bike Park was constructed under the same leadership. If you'd like to see a video that goes more in depth into the operations found at the Shuttle Access Rock Creek Bike Park, be sure to click the link in the description or check out the explained playlist featured on my channel. The ultimate goal of constructing the Ride Canuga Bike Park was to foster an environment that allowed for progression on a level the region had not yet seen before. As a result, the property contains some of the largest jumps and features seen in the entire country, perfectly crafted to be as safe and approachable as possible. The venue is ever-changing and it seems like every couple of months another major investment has been made to the property. From new trails and features, to new training areas and parking lot amenities, it seems like the facility always has something new to offer. On top of the impeccable trails and humongous jumps found at Ride Canuga, the property also contains a shop featuring rentals, mechanical support, mountain bike related merchandise, and even snacks slash sandwiches. The terrain featured on Wolf Mountain consists of a few large rocks and a lot of sandy clay. The dirt is absolutely perfect for the flow trails the venue has become known for over the years, and the trail crew have incorporated the rocks found on site into some creative and exciting features. The trails present also feature some world-class drainage and are generally dry and ready to ride. The flowy nature of the trails is something not found at other locations in North Carolina, and gives them a truly unique feel. With all of the investments put into the venue over the past couple years, Ride Canuga should be on everyone's bucket list as a must-visit mountain bike park in the United States. The trails found at Ride Canuga range from progressive green circle beginner terrain, to fun and unique blue trails, to world-class, truly challenging double white diamond downhill tracks. Currently, the mountain features a total of 11 downhill oriented trails, with 2 greens, 5 blues, and 4 blacks. There's also a network of supporting climbing and connector trails, as well as a skills progression park and a world-class dirt jump complex. A quick breakdown of the downhill trails goes as follows. Evergreen is a green flow trail that descends from the top of Wolf Mountain. Evergreen is an extremely fast and flowy beginner style trail packed with amazing berms, rollers, and creative side hits. This run is the perfect beginner trail to properly introduce new riders to downhill mountain biking while still having fun and unique opportunities for more advanced riders to explore. I personally love to warm up on this trail as its low consequence nature is perfect for first laps. First in flight is a green free ride trail. Free ride trails are indicated on the trail map with an orange circle and generally feature more jumps and smoother terrain. The trail serves as a progressive alternative to some of the other jump trails found on the property, as the jumps on this trail are relatively small and low consequence when compared to others seen throughout the bike park. GNCC is a blue technical trail featuring some amazing rutted out turns and a unique handcuff feel. It begins with some extremely tight turns that open up into some flat out sections featuring small drops, moto whoops, and roots. The track was initially cut in with the use of motorized dirt bikes, hence the name GNCC, Grand National Cross Country Enduro Moto Racing. Roto Ruckus is a blue flow trail with some serious berms and amazing rollers. This track was the first purpose-built flow trail on the property and ultimately aided in providing a vision for what the property's full potential could be. This track is always so much fun and it's awesome to find all the little gaps and secret lines put in by the trail crew. Beekeeper is another blue technical run that features some high speed sections littered with smaller jumps, but also some tight and technical spots that require more precise line choice. This track is a riot from start to finish and gets its riders up to some ridiculous speeds. Perhaps the most well known trail in all of Ride Canuga is the blue free ride line Tortuga. The jump line is rated blue, however there is a massive high speed step up that I would argue is an advanced level jump. The jump line is perfectly positioned so that it can be ridden at the end of a multitude of different laps and makes for a great finish to any run down the mountain. The flow and cohesiveness of this track make it so much fun to ride and I always find myself coming back for more. 
This trail has helped aid in the progression of countless riders in the southeastern United States, and it's still amazing to think that something like it exists in the area today. The newest trail to be constructed at Ride Canuka is quickly becoming a fan favorite. Deadwood is the first trail on Wolf Mountain to utilize wooden features, and some of them are truly massive. When large wooden features are paired with incredible jumps and unbelievable berms, it's a tough combination to beat. Deadwood is an incredible addition to the bike park, and it would be cool to someday see a more advanced trail that utilizes wooden features on the property. Hemlock Epoch is a single black diamond advanced flow trail. The track features some gnarly man-made rockwork, countless technical gap jumps, multiple high-speed sections, and even a road gap. A cool theme seen throughout the trail is the addition of multiple line options with varying difficulty, which makes the trail awesome for progression. Hemlock Epoch has been a park favorite ever since it opened with the property back in 2020. The trail seems to get reworked every season and becomes better and better with each passing year. Southeast style is truly unlike anything else in the southeastern United States. Outside of maybe air supply at Jared's Place Bike Park, Southeast style is the trail for big air in the region. With notable features such as Big Brutus and Big Red, and jumps ranging in size from 20 to 50 feet, Southeast Style provides its riders with feelings of hang time not attainable anywhere else. The lips are all perfectly crafted to send riders right to the sweet spot on every landing when going trail speed, and the run as a whole is a demonstration of what is possible on a mountain bike in today's day and age. I personally love the fact that this trail exists and hope that more bike parks in the region take note of what is possible. Paint It Black was the very first trail to be cut into the Canuga Bike Park. With construction spearheaded by professional riders Nico Mulally and Luca Shaw, the track was bound to be something special. The Black Technical Trail features many gnarly features like rock drops, gap jumps, and steep, tight sections that really challenge riders and put their bikes to the test. Natural Selection is, in my personal opinion, the most challenging trail at Ride Canuga. The trail is a double black technical run, known for featuring some insane man-made rock work, humongous gap jumps, as well as some steep rutted out sections with multiple line options. This track definitely qualifies as double black diamond and is one of the most challenging trails in the state of North Carolina. Sections of this track feel like something straight out of Red Bull Hardline, and it's awesome to see such advanced level trails make their way to the southeastern United States. Apart from the main bike park offerings, Ride Canuga is situated right in the middle of Pisgah National Forest and is surrounded by an insane network of backcountry trails unlike anything else in the world. If you're already in the area, these trails are definitely worth checking out as they're truly unlike anything else in the area. Also, as mentioned before, Ride Rock Creek Bike Park is also in the area and is another popular riding spot in the region. Ride Canuga's marquee feature is its e-bike friendly approach to mountain biking. While I have never personally had the opportunity to ride an e-bike at this location, I have seen firsthand just how many laps are attainable with them. With a ticket, mountain bikers have access to a shuttle road and climbing trail to take them up the mountain. Also, as mentioned before, Ride Canuga features an amazing skills progression area, featuring berms, skinnies, drops, small jumps, and rock gardens to help new riders get acquainted with the sport in a safe and constructive manner. In addition to the incredible trails and skills area, the bike park recently constructed a set of world-class dirt jumps ranging from green to black with some serious hits, including a container drop and a metal ramp gap jump. A day pass to the Ride Canuga Bike Park in 2023 cost $29 for adults and $19 for children 18 and under, with monthly memberships available for $50 per month. Season pass rates in 2023 were $400 for adults and $300 for children, but it is worth noting that Ride Canuga is open year-round, unlike many other bike parks who are only open for a few months out of the year. Ride Canuga also features a full-service bike shop at its base capable of performing a vast majority of mountain bike repairs. The shop also features a rental fleet consisting of specialized Turbo Levo mountain bikes ranging from kid sizing to extra large. Rentals are available for $130 per day with a $40 insurance charge. Discounts are also offered if a rental bike and day pass are purchased together. In the shop, a variety of mountain biking supplies like protection, action camera, snacks, and spare parts are also available for sale, and the shop is very well run overall. To conclude, Ride Canuga is an incredible offering for mountain biking in the southeastern United States. The mountain features a total of 500 feet of vertical elevation loss, making it one of the smaller mountains in the region. However, the trails still manage to provide some really long runs with great diversity and quality. Nico Mulally, Dave Lamont, and the Pisgah Trail Company worked really hard to make something fun and unique, and their efforts certainly paid off. I would personally recommend Ride Canuga to any avid mountain biker in the southeastern United States. 2200 words later and we made it to the end of the video. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing as it really helps the channel out against the YouTube algorithm. If you'd like to see the raw POV footage from these trails, be sure to check out the links in the description of this video or my DH Parks playlist featured on my channel. 
be sure to leave a comment if you've been to the Ride Canuga Bike Park and what your opinions were of it. There are so many other bike parks and trail systems I can explain, and if you'd like to see your local trail system or bike park in the next episode, be sure to let me know in the comments. That's all for now, and until next time, just send it.